Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Steve, Principal Engineer in Big Tech, and this is Linux by the way. Today I wanted to share my very minimal Fedora 41 setup that I have running on the Framework 13 AMD edition. For both work and personal projects, I try to use as few tools as possible, and I'll walk you through setting up OhMyZSH, NerdFonts, NeoVim, Atuan, and ZellaJ. For my stock desktop environment, I'm running GNOME, but if you disable the animations, it can be very efficient like i3. Let's go ahead and get started. One of the big features about i3 that developers like is the ability to switch applications instantly. And so on the stock GNOME, if I switch between them, uh, there's a slight animation delay, but we can change that by typing animations, and that will take us to the accessibility menu. And from here, click seeing, and then we can click animation effects off. And in this case, it lets me to switch everything instantly. So I can go uh, super key one, super key two, super key three, and I can switch between my settings and my web browser, or in this case, my editor in my web browser instantaneously, no delay. I uh, can just keep my hands you know, pretty close to the home row and go between those apps. And on the Framework 13, when I'm working in laptop only mode, that's really handy because I just keep everything in full screen and I always know where they are. So I just go back and forth. You can see here, this is like my YouTube page or whatever, but uh, swapping instantly makes it a lot easier to navigate and manage my windows. And I don't even need tiling at that point. I just keep them all full screen. To set up the keyboard shortcuts, you can also just type uh, keyboard here and select that and go down to keyboard shortcuts. And from here, what we're gonna do is you see under navigation, I have four modified. Uh, it will let you do one, two, three, and four. Uh, you can probably hack it up to support more than that, but in general, if you have an editor, like a research pane, a communications pane, et cetera, that covers most needs. Uh, so I have like eight workspaces total, but I pretty much go through one, two, three, four. And then if I need anything fancy, I'll set that up. For my shell on both my personal and work computers, I'm using ZSH, which has a healthy ecosystem of plugins available for just about anything. I use it to show which Kubernetes clusters I'm connected to or AWS account I'm using, and it has auto completion. Fedora 41 and most distributions ship with the Bash shell by default. If you don't know which shell you're running, go ahead and type echo dollar sign shell, and this will tell you. And so in this case, it's running bin bash, and we're going to switch it to ZSH. If you don't have it installed yet, just run sudo dnf install uh, ZSH. And if you're on Ubuntu, you can use app get to do the same thing. I already have it installed here, uh, but if you don't, that's how you do it. Now that we have ZSH installed, it doesn't do much by default. So if you run it, uh, it doesn't have a colorful informative prompt or anything else, or even a configuration file. So the first step we're going to want to do is install OhMyZSH. So we're going to go ahead and head over to ohmyz.sh and down here there's going to be an install button so hit that and there's a curl command to run make sure whenever you run one of these commands you know that it does run as your user so don't ever just paste something in without like understanding what you're doing because it could uh, steal your data or install something bad in your system etc in this case this is a trusted website that i've used many times before and i have looked at the contents of the script and it's legit uh, but keep in mind, whenever you're asked to paste this in, you want to know what you're pasting in. So we'll go ahead and copy this and paste it in over here. And that will install OhMyZSH. It's going to ask us to change our default shell. Go ahead and say yes. And type in your password because you're going to need to edit the password file to do that. And now we have OhMyZSH. Next, we need to install a few plugins. And this is probably my favorite tip. Just use GitHub Gists. GitHub Gists are full of diligent people just like us sharing scripts to configure their systems, and they usually follow better practices than just random Googling. Not only do we get our system set up fast, but it's a great way to learn. Let's go ahead and open Gists and check out and install the config slash plugins that they have. So I went ahead and searched this up and I found this one and I looked it over and it looked pretty legit. It has Ubuntu instructions, but at this point we don't care. It's all the same commands. We've already installed OhMyZSH and now we can install these plugins. So all you gotta do is just highlight these and paste them in the terminal. And again, you can see how I kind of swap back and forth between these very fast. So it's it's a pretty good, efficient workflow. Uh, we just did the auto suggestions plugin, and now we're gonna do the syntax highlighting plugin, and we'll clone that. And then we will also do the fast syntax highlighting plugin. And we have one more, which is the autocomplete plugin. And we will go ahead and paste that in. And that is most of the configuration we're gonna do. Uh, the next thing, we're gonna highlight this plugins line, and this will just enable them for us in our ZSH config. So let's go ahead and edit uh, ZSHRC. And in here, there's gonna be a line which says plugins. 
And we will just go ahead and go down here and paste this new line in. And we can take the old one and just comment that out. Um, I usually, when I change it, I comment them out, but you can manage that however you want. Uh, and so we'll save that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of this terminal and show you that when we run the terminal now, uh, it is gonna start in ZSH mode and now it has all the plugins. So if I type like PSAX, uh, you see here that there's a bunch of options. So ZSH knows we're typing PS and it knows how PS works. And so it can give us all these auto completions and that happens in a number of different contexts. And so I like it, it's pretty quick, doesn't slow my workflow down and allows me to, to see different options and things. And so I'll go ahead and run that. Um, and then the next time I go to run it, if you see I just type the P key here, uh, it's automatically searching my history. So it says PSAX and I can just hit the arrow key and I can get the full command again. And so if I was to say echo, hello Linux, by the way, YouTube, do that, uh, that puts it out. But then if I type E again, and just hit the arrow key, I can run that like over and over and over again. And in terms of like shell work and DevOps and things like that, you're running the same commands like thousands of times. And so super handy, uh, good history search, etc., and command discovery. So you're able to kind of see how everything works. Let's go ahead and switch the theme. So we're gonna edit the ZSHRC again. And this time we're gonna go and we're gonna change this line. So we'll cut and paste that in a second. Uh, comment that out and we'll change this Robbie Russell to Agnoster and so we'll do that and uh, We will source our ZSHRC And now we have a new prompt so this prompt is a little more aesthetic slash descriptive and I like it uh, So we'll just do reset here and so that's my new prompt and you can configure these prompts a bunch of different ways there was a really popular one called Powerline 10K that I liked, but it's not supported. So I probably wouldn't run that one. Just stick with one of the other supported themes. Uh, and if you ever wanted to know like technically what this is, it's just called PS1. So you can do echo PS1 and that is your prompt. And that's how all of this works. And this actually works in bash too, in terms of like PS1s and you can Google more on how that works. To make all the command line tools work, we also need to grab something called the nerd font, which has all the special symbols included in the font to make our terminal programs look good. Let's open nerdfonts.com and we will click over here. And then if you click download, you can choose from all these different fonts. And these are the fonts plus the additional symbols like file folders and programming language icons and things like that. Uh, so in my case, I usually like the Fira series of fonts. And so I do the Fira Mono Nerd font. All you gotta do is click download here. Uh, that will download it. And then if you haven't done this before, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna mkdir home.fonts. And all we gotta do is extract the file, put it in .fonts, and it will be available in GNOME to you. So uh, I already have it here in the nerd font setup, but if you don't do that, and then uh, just go to your downloads folder and unzip Firmano. And then what you can do is just mv star to otf to the home.fonts, and that will set up the fonts for you. And then from there, uh, pop open the GNOME tweak tool. And if you go to fonts up here, you can change your monospace font to the nerd font. Uh, that will make sure that your terminal and everything else gets it. And while you're here, if you're on a laptop screen that's not like super high DPI, uh, you can swap the anti-aliasing for LCD screens. This is not needed if you're at like 4K res, but if you're, if you're at low res, this can be helpful. Let's go ahead and set up NeoVim. Fedora 41 ships with a recent version, so all we have to do is run the sudo dnf install NeoVim and it's gonna ask you for your password if you haven't entered it recently. And it's also gonna install some sensible dependencies here. Uh, things like ripgrep will be pulled in by default. So we'll say yes, do that. And then once that's installed, we probably also wanna do a few helper utilities. So make sure we have FD and FCF, uh, which I think I've already installed in here, I have. So if you haven't, do FD and FCF, that will make the finding faster. Uh, so now that we have NeoVim, we can type NVim and that will do the default NeoVim screen. Now that we have NeoVim installed, I always use LazyVim to configure it. So let's open up lazyvim.org and paste in the installation instructions. So you can go to installation over here and then it's gonna give you a whole set of commands and these will remove and back up your older config if you need to. Um, I don't think I have one here, so it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna go ahead and clone the new one and we'll do that and then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this and this just makes it so that 
when we clone a Git repo, it has the remote address of the repo you cloned it from, and so this will be a fresh setup and you'll make your own repo. So now that LazyVim is installed, we just run NeoVim, and this is gonna download all the different default plugins and everything to make uh, completion and everything kind of work out of the box. Run NeoVim, we're gonna see an error message at the bottom, and it's saying we don't have a compiler installed. So some of the extensions and plugins need to actually compile, uh, not a big deal. In Fedora 41, it's DNF install development tools, and we'll run this using sudo. So go ahead and copy that. And then let's quit out of NeoVim and quit out of that. And then do sudo and then paste that in. And this is gonna install just basic developer tools. If you're on Ubuntu, uh, it's build-essential. And this one's developer tools, same general idea with the basic packages required for a, a compilation environment. And now that our tool's installed, if we go ahead and open NeoVim back up, you can see that it detected that the compiler was installed and it's now compiling the tree sitter parser and some other things and we are set up and good to go. So let's go ahead and make a new directory just called test. And from here, we're going to invim test.sh and we'll just make an example bash script which says echo hello world and we'll do that. And let's also make another file here which is just uh, Linux by the way .txt some text and so now when we run NeoVim, what we can do is, is you can hit the space bar and this will show you some commands on the right hand side. And so we can do uh, explore Neo tree with the current working directory. And now we can navigate this just sort of like a VS code or whatever. And so you can kind of keep everything full screen, navigate all your files, switch between them very easy. Uh, you can use control WW to switch back and forth. And then from here, uh, LazyVim has its own bindings. So I can do a uh, square bracket left B and square back bracket right B and that switches my buffers quickly and I can also do things like space FT and then actually open terminal within Vim so I can kind of do everything from Vim I need to do all my development and DevOps work and if you need any plugins uh, it's very easy so we can just go back to the home screen and from here uh, you can go ahead and click lazy extras and this usually has most of the things you want. So the lazy website's really well documented. Most things you can just cut and paste in there and everything works, but uh, this is a good starting point. So you can see here, we got all these different things and uh, you can install your LSP support, your language server. Uh, you can install the syntax highlighting, whatever you need. And that's what I do out of the box. And then you can just commit that config to Git, and then it can be on all your computers. Another tool I started using is ZellaJ, which is a Rust-based replacement for Screen or Tmux that has a little more friendly UI. Let's open up ZellaJ.dev and we'll go ahead and click the Linux download and that will download that. And then what we can do is, is we can go to our home directory and we can go to downloads and we can extract this tarxfj and then that gives us the binary. And so you could run it from right here and it just works. Uh, but what I like to do whenever I download a binary from the internet is instead of that, I make a home directory and I make a bin. And from here, what I do is let's edit the ZSHRC and we'll type export path is equal to dollar sign path colon and then dollar sign home slash bin. And so what this allows me to do is any tool I download, I can just put in bin and it will pop up and I don't have to do like sudo to install it and use our local bin or anything else. Everything's self-contained in my home directory. And that's a little more friendly for transferring computers and not necessarily polluting my whole system with these one-off tools. So we'll go ahead and move downloads, ZellaJ to bin. And from here, what we can do is we can resource our ZSHRC and then I can run ZellaJ. And so it pops up and you can see here, I can do things like control P for pane and say new pane. And that gives me the side by side. And I can do all these things in Vim, but I can also do it here. So in case there's something I'm doing outside of Vim, uh, this is really handy. And you can do things like make tabs. And so uh, sometimes I will make a tab for like a um, different projects. So I'll have one set of Vim for one project and then another set of Vim for another project. And I can do all of that uh, just using ZellaJ itself. We also want to combine the ZSH plugins with a way to navigate our history. And there's a great tool also written in Rust that uses SQLite and it's called the Tuint. It allows efficient searching of command history while also giving the option to sync across your systems and it supports full encryption. If you don't trust the servers, you can self-host it. 
Let's go ahead and open a 2win.sh and we'll do the same uh, copying the installation script. So just do this, copy, swap back over, and that will install it and download it. And it basically actually does what we do with ZellaJ, uh, but a little more automated. And so if we check out our .zshrc, you can see at the bottom it already edited ZSHRC and put the Etuan init ZSH there. Uh, so now what we can do is we can source that file again and we can run Etuan. And you can see it's in our path. And the next thing we want to do is import our history. So uh, by default, it has a fresh database and your history isn't there. But if you've been running a system for a while, you might have a ton of history that's very useful and you don't want to lose it. And so we can run the Etuan import dash H. And in this case, we'll say, uh, go ahead and import ZSH. And that will import all our legacy config. So by default, there's a lot of different key bindings that you could use. The simplest one is just hit the up arrow. So we'll hit up and you can see all the different commands we use in the YouTube video and getting this already. And if you hit the tab key, you can edit it. Or if you just hit the enter key, it will just execute it for you again. And you can also go through this. If you see on the bottom left, it says host session directory. And so you can hit the control R key to iterate through those. So if you run a bunch of commands, usually in a specific directory, that can be really handy because it's gonna filter down to say, oh, here are the set of commands you ran in this project directory. And then you can also sync that across your system so it's available everywhere. And as a DevX practitioner, as you run these thousands and thousands of commands, it's gonna make you much more productive to not only have to not Google them each time, to know that they're trusted, et cetera, but to have them just autocomplete. So you can almost go on autopilot and then you can easily take those and script them and automate them as you need. I also wanted to note that the new Framework 13 AMD edition works great with Fedora 41, and I'm not configuring or tweaking any drivers or settings out of the box. The Wi-Fi, the screen brightness, and the audio all work well under Linux. Most importantly, I have the 2.8K IPS display, which has over 500 nits of brightness, and it's matte, so you can see the screen clearly in almost any environment. It is 2880 by 1920, and that lets us scale to 200%, which means that all the problems around fractional scaling go away. It means that the fonts, the window decorations, they're all rendered perfectly, and you don't suffer any major performance penalties. The display also supports 120 hertz, so scrolling is very smooth. If you're interested in a Linux laptop, you really can't go wrong with the Framework 13 AMD version, but I would stay away from any of the Intel models at the moment due to their power and efficiency issues. I use this very minimal setup across multiple systems, and it only takes me about five minutes to get going if I'm not making a YouTube video about it. Most of the heavy lifting is done by NeoVim, and then the ZSH plugins and Atuin make it much easier to run repeat commands and to get going. Let me know what you think and what tools you use in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next video.